Begin seated on your yoga mat. Sit cross-legged with one foot out in front. Spine is really long. Shoulder blades drawn toward each other for broad collarbones. And close your eyes. Begin to focus on your breath. Breathing in and out through the nose. And with each exhale, feel any stress or tension just begin to melt away. Relax the space between your eyebrows. Close your mouth, but part your teeth, relaxing the jaw. Relax your shoulders. And notice the sensation of your belly breathing. The inhale, the belly gets big. The exhale, and the navel draws in towards the spine. Take a moment to set an intention for your practice. And when you're ready, lift your arms up overhead. Exhale, plug the arms into the torso. Interlace the fingers, bring the hands behind the head, and just gently draw the chin towards the chest, keeping your spine really long. You're not pulling too hard. It's all really gentle and just feels good. Inhale, lift and release. Exhale, send the left arm to the right knee and the right fingertips behind you. Keep the shoulder blades drawing toward each other and look out over your right shoulder. As you inhale, look ahead, release. Bring the other foot in front of you. Sit tall and we'll take it to the other side. Lift the arms. Exhale, shoulders plugged into the torso. Interlace the fingers. Bring the hands to the back of the head and gently draw the chin down towards the chest. Keeping the spine really long and maintaining your belly breathing. As you inhale, lift. Extend the arms and bring the right arm to the left knee and the left fingertips behind you. Shoulder blades drawn toward each other, look out over your left shoulder. As you inhale, look ahead and release. We're gonna roll over the knees now and come onto all fours. Wrists, elbows, shoulders in one line, knees directly underneath the hips. Inhale, right arm lifts, reach as high as you can, look up. Exhale, thread the needle, so bring the right shoulder down to the ground and rest your temple on the mat. As you inhale, we'll lift back up, extending the arm up overhead, pushing the mat away from you. Exhale, send the right arm forward. Find your balance, engage your core, and extend the left leg back behind you. So you're not going for height, you're just trying to get as long as you can. And then as you exhale, Draw the elbow and the knee toward each other. We're gonna do that three times. So pushing the mat away as the elbow and knee touch, keeping the fingers and the toes spread and engaged. Stop here, bend the knee and reach back, maybe grab hold of the foot. And if that happens for you, lift up, breathing into the chest and the hip flexor. Release and come into child's pose. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, just let it all go. Draw your armpits down towards the mat. On your next inhale, taking it to the other side. Lift the left arm, look up, push the mat away. Exhale, thread the needle, left arm onto the mat. The temple comes down as well. As you inhale, lift, look up, reach, spread the fingers. Exhale, send the arm forward, find your balance and then extend the right leg back behind you. Toes are spread, fingers are spread, and when you're ready, touch the elbow to the knee, pushing the mat away and rounding the back. Do it two more times. And on the last time, extend and hold, then bend the right knee, reach back and grab hold of the foot. If it doesn't happen for you, don't worry about it. You can just stay with your leg and arm extended. Release and come into child's pose. From here, we're gonna send the upper body forward, 
sliding the upper body forward until the hips come over the knees for extended puppy pose. And this should just feel really good in the shoulder area. When you're ready, bring the elbows down to the ground and come all the way onto your mat. Hands underneath the shoulders will take a cobra pose. So your arms don't have to be straight, just do the best you can. You wanna think about length in your spine. We're gonna do that two more times. So try not to have any compression in the low back. Moving with your breath, everything very gentle, just warming up the spine. Curl the toes, lift the knees. Chaturanga straight into downward facing dog. First downward dog of the day, so be really gentle with yourself. Don't worry if the heels don't come down to the mat. Begin to bicycle out the knees, picturing the rest of your body as an upside down letter V. Fingers are spread, index fingers are pointed straight out in front of you. And then find stillness, take a couple deep breaths. No tension in your neck. On your next inhale, walk your fingers back towards your feet. We'll take ragdoll pose. Keep a micro bend in the knees and take a deep breath in. As you exhale, just melt the body over the legs. One more time, inhale, deep breath in. Exhale, melt the body over the legs. Walk the hands back out to downward facing dog. Fingers are spread, push the mat away from you. On your next inhale, lift the right leg, spread the right toes. Bend the knee, open up the hip, and then draw the right shoulder in line with the left as you begin to circle your ankle in one direction and then the other. Keep the toes flexed and move with control. On your next inhale, we're gonna come forward, so bring the shoulders over the wrists, knee in towards the forehead. Then extend the foot out to the left as you come into wild thing. So opening up the heart, opening up the chest, the hip flexors, breathe. Push the mat away as you reach back. And on your next inhale, we'll come back into three-legged dog. Extend as fully as you can and then step the right foot forward. Take low lunge with the left knee down onto the ground. Inhale, lift the arms, send the hips forward, send the heart forward. Look up if that feels good for you. Plug the arms into the torso. Then bring the hands down to the mat and extend the right leg, melting over the right thigh. Inhale, walk forward. Lift the back knee and step into Chaturanga, lowering all the way down. As you inhale, use your back body muscles to lift up. We'll do that three times. So again, you want to think about length here. Lengthen your tailbone, lengthen your spine, no compression. Don't worry if you can't straighten your arms all the way. On the last time, curl the toes, lift the knees, be strong and stiff as you push up through Chaturanga into Downward Facing Dog. As you inhale, we'll lift the left leg as high as you can, taking it over to the other side. Toes are spread. Bend the knee, open up the hip. Bring the left shoulder in line with the right and begin to circle your foot, keeping your toes spread and maintaining control. On the next inhale, we'll come forward, so bring the shoulders over the wrists, knee in towards the forehead. Extend the leg out to your right as you open up, lifting the right arm for wild things. You wanna lift the chest, lift the hips, breathe into any areas of tension, and when you're ready, we'll meet again in three-legged dog. Extend as much as you can, and when you're ready, step the foot to the front of the mat, lower the right knee down to the ground. Inhale, lift the arms, Exhale, send the hips forward, send the chest forward, little back bend. Plug the arms into the torso, fingers are bright. Exhale, hands come down to the mat, extend the left leg. Melt the body over the thigh. Inhale, walk forward.
Step back, Chaturanga. Lower all the way down. Inhale, push into the mat and use your back body muscles to lift up. We'll do that two more times. Move slower than you want to go. Shoulders away from your ears. Chest is really open. Last time. And release. Curl the toes, lift the knees. Be really stiff as you push up and into downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, release any tension in the neck. As you inhale, come onto your toes, bend your knees, use your core to hop forward. Halfway lift. Exhale, fingers in line with the toes if you can. Forward fold. You can also bend your knees if you need to. Inhale, come up with a flat back. Exhale, Tadasana, Mountain Pose. As you inhale, lift the left arm. Take the right arm out to the side with your thumb pointing behind you. Lift the right leg and grab the foot from the arch, from the inside arch. Find your balance, be really tall, use your core. On your next inhale, come into Nadarajasana, Dancer's Pose. So you want the left quadricep engaged. Reach forward with your arm, breathe into the chest and the hip flexors. When you're ready, release the pose. Keep that back foot up if you can and extend the right arm overhead. When you're ready, fold at the waist. Bring the fingers down to the ground. We're gonna come into half moon, so open up the right hip. Keep the right toes engaged. Lift the right arm. So your left hand is down in front of you and then out to the left a little bit. That'll help stabilize. You can stay there, or if you're feeling a bit more flexible, you can reach back, see what happens if you grab hold of the foot for sugarcane pose. Be really calm in your breath. When you're ready, release and we'll slowly drop back to warrior two. Clarify your foundation here, so the right foot outer edge is parallel with the short edge of the mat. Strong warrior arms, left knee directly above the ankle or slightly behind. From here, we're taking side extended side angle pose. So look up over at the right hand, breathe into the side body and lift back up, warrior two. Straighten the leg, we'll take trikonasana, so come forward as far as you can and then rotate the arms. Beginners want to take the hand to the shins or wherever they can on the leg. And more flexible people can come down onto the mat with the fingers. If it's too much for your head to look up, just look down. And when you're ready, release the pose, chaturanga. As you inhale, we're going to come into upward facing dog. So just the hands and the feet on the mat, collarbones broad. Roll over the toes. Downward facing dog. As you inhale, rise onto the toes, bend the knees, use your core, hop forward, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold, bend the knees if you need to, chin to shins. Inhale, rise all the way up, flat back. Exhale, hands to the heart, Tadasana. We'll take Nadarajasana, Dancer's Pose on the other side. So raise the right arm, left arm out to your left, and grab hold of the left foot from the inside arch. Left toes engaged, core engaged. Right quadricep engaged as you inhale, come forward. Reach the arm forward, leg up. Breathe into the chest, breathe into the hip flexor. As you inhale, release the pose, but keep that back foot lifted. Lift the left arm when you're ready. Fold forward and bring the fingers down to the ground in preparation for half moon pose. So open up the left hip, bring the right hand down in front of you and then out to your right to help stabilize. Lift the left arm when you're ready. You can look at the ground or out to the side, which is a little bit more challenging. Stay here or see what happens when you bend the foot, sorry, bend the knee and reach back and grab hold of the foot. When you're ready, gently release and we'll slowly with control drop back 
to warrior two. Clarify your foundation. So right knee directly above right ankle or slightly behind. From here, we'll take extended side angle. So come forward with the torso and rotate the arms, bringing the left arm by your ear. Really sink low with the hips and push into that outer edge of the left foot. As you inhale, rise up, straighten the leg, and we'll take Trikonasana. So engage the right quadricep, then come forward as far as you can and rotate the arms. Beginners want to take the right hand on the shin, and if you have more flexibility, take the fingers down to the mat. If it's too much for you to look up, look down at the mat. That sometimes helps the neck. Inhale, lift and release. Exhale, bend the knee. Inhale, windmill the arms down, chaturanga. As you inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. On the next inhale, rise onto the toes. Bend the knees and use your core strength to hop forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise all the way up with a flat back. Exhale, hands to the heart, Tadasana, Mountain Pose. Feet are together, knees are together. Put all the weight on the left foot and lift the right leg. As you inhale, we'll take Warrior Three. So you don't want to let the right hip lift, right toes pointed down to the ground. From here, we're going to come slowly down into seated spinal twist. So bend both knees and with control, lower down. Lift the right arm. And then hook the right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Shoulder blades draw toward each other. Beginners stay there. More advanced, take a bind if that's in your practice. So the collarbones are broad and you're looking out over your left shoulder with your right eye. With each exhale, you twist just a little bit more. And when you're ready to release, look ahead. Bring the fingers down in front of you and slowly stand up, bringing your feet together, forward fold. Inhale, rise with a flat back. Exhale, Tadasana, Mountain Pose. Taking it to the other side, put all the weight in the right foot. Lift the left leg. Toes are bright. Come forward with the torso. Don't let the left hip lift. Left toes pointed straight down to the mat. Spin the inner left thigh to the sky and use your core strength to bend both knees and lower all the way down for seated spinal twist. As you inhale, lift the left arm, hook the left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Look behind you with your left eye. Beginners stay there more advanced, come into a bind if that's in your practice. You wanna stay really tall in the spine and with each exhale, twist just a little bit more, initiating the twist of the navel. When you're ready to release, windmill the arms down and slowly come to stand, feet together, forward fold. Inhale, rise with a flat back. Exhale, feet together, knees together, Utkatasana, chair pose. So the spine is really long, no arch in the back. Put all the weight on the right foot and lift the left leg, crossing it over the right leg. Beginners stay here. More advanced people can try to tuck the toes. Open up the arms and take the right arm underneath the left. If this is too much for you, just bring the forearms to touch and don't worry about crossing one arm over the other. Sit really low. Back is long, chest is broad. And as you exhale, release the pose. Sit low, Utkatasana. Taking it over to the other side, put all the weight in the left foot and cross the right leg. Hook the toes if that's available to you. Open up the arms. As you exhale, left arm underneath right. Sit with your weight back. So imagining that if your arms weren't in the way, you could look down and see your toes. As you exhale, release the pose. Sit low, Utkatasana. Arms out in front, rise up onto the toes. Slowly, with control, lower down. If it feels okay for your knees when you get down, 
you can bounce. When you're ready, release, come to sit. Take your first two fingers and grab hold of the big toes. Use your core and begin to extend the legs out in front. If you can't extend the legs out in front, just stay here. If you are extended completely, flex your feet, keeping your legs stiff and your feet flexed. Come down onto the mat. <laughs> Reach your upper body forward. Beginners, you can just meet us here without the drop. And then release the pose. Bring your feet together. Then reach your hands back behind you. Fingers pointed out in front. And lift the hips for Parvottanasana. This is a really great stretch for the shoulders. If it's too much for you, you can bend the knees before you come into it. So it's a tabletop position. When you're ready, release the pose. Bring the arms out in front and slowly come all the way down. We'll do a little back bending here, so we'll start with bridge pose. Bring your feet close to your butt, feet are hip distance apart and toes pointed straight out in front. You really don't want the toes to start pointing out to the sides. As you inhale, lift the hips. So you wanna feel your feet underneath your knees. Bring your hands interlaced behind you. And then you need to roll onto the sides of the arms so you can press the palms together and lift the chest. I'm gonna breathe into any tension. And really feel your whole front body opening up. If you feel good here and you want to take it a step further, lift the right leg, spread the right toes. Whatever you do on one side, do on the other. So if you've lifted that leg, set it down and lift the other. Keep pressing into the mat, lifting the body up, breathing into the hip flexors, breathing into the chest, and when you're ready, release the pose. If that felt pretty intense for you and you wanna just stay with that, do that again. Or if you're ready to move on, come into wheel pose. So to do that, we bring the hands by our ears, fingers pointed towards our shoulders, feet as close to your butt as you can, toes pointed exactly forward, elbows up to the sky. Press into the mat and lift up. You wanna picture your body as an upside down letter U, not a letter V. So no compression in the spine. Look straight between your hands if you can. If you feel really good there, you can lift up one leg, spreading the toes. And whatever you do on one side, do on the other. So lift the other leg. Remember to breathe slow, full, deep breaths. When you've had enough, release the pose. Take a couple deep breaths. Just keeping your back flat, your low back glued to the mat. Back bends are really energizing. So if you're doing this in the middle of the afternoon, that's great to combat the afternoon slump. From here, heel toe your feet together and open up your knees. This is Supta Baddha Konasana. Bottoms of the feet are touching, breathing into the inner thighs. As you inhale, bring your knees together. As you exhale, hug the right knee in towards the chest, extending the left leg. Right toes are spread, and the back of the neck is long. So to do that, tuck your chin towards your chest just a little bit. Keep the low back glued to the mat. Keep pressing the left leg into the ground. And on the next inhale, extend the right leg. If you're a beginner, you might benefit from using a yoga strap or if you don't have one, just use a towel or a, a, um, a belt or something. And bring that into the middle of the foot. 
and that will help extend the leg. From here, grab hold of the big toe with the first two fingers, and as you exhale, lift the head to meet the leg. Exhale, release the pose. Left hand to the leg, bringing the right arm down to the ground for supine spinal twist. Looking out over your right shoulder, and as you exhale, extend the shoulder down to the mat. Extend the right knee down to the mat. Inhale back to center. Take the right hand to the knee, left hand to the left hip, and open up the leg. Beginners stay there. If you're more flexible, extend your right foot, grabbing hold of the big toe. You want to press with your left hand into the hip so the left hip doesn't lift. And when you're ready, we'll take it to the other side. So hug the left knee into the chest, extending the right foot. Left toes are bright. When you're ready, extend the leg, breathing into any tension in the hamstring. You never really want to push the hamstring too much, so really find your edge, that place where you know you're not going to get hurt, but you know that you're getting a good deep stretch. If you feel really good there, Take your first two fingers to the big toe, and as you exhale, lift the head to meet the leg. Don't worry if it doesn't get there. One side is usually more challenging than the other. Just don't worry about it, it's normal. As you exhale, take the right hand to the left leg, and pull it up and over the body for supine spinal twist. So look out over your left shoulder. As you exhale, see if the shoulder can come down to the mat and if the left knee can come down to the ground for a deeper twist. Inhale back to center. Take the left hand to the left knee and open it up. Press the right hand into the hip and beginners stay there or extend the leg if you've got more flexibility and open up the leg to the left. Breathe space and length into the inner thigh. And when you're ready, come back to center and release the pose. Bend both knees. I'm going to take happy baby here, so grab hold of the outside edges of the feet. And as you exhale, bring the knees in towards the armpit. Tuck your chin a little bit towards your chest for a long neck and just breathe into the hips. Feet are flat, imagining you're about to walk on the ceiling. Exhale, release the pose. Cross the right leg over the left. Beginners grab hold of the tops of the shins. More flexible people grab hold of the outside edges of the feet and then pull the knees in towards the body. It's a really great stretch for sciatica. This is Supta Gomukhasana. We'll release and take it to the other side. So again, beginners, grab hold of the tops of the shins. We'll grab hold of the outside edges of the feet. Pull the legs in towards the body and breathe. On your next inhale, release the pose and begin to circle the knees just to release any tension in the low back. My camera cut off here, so the next pose is Shavasana, but it didn't get recorded. So to do that, just extend your legs, bring the mat distance apart and open up your arms. Close your eyes and stay here for at least five minutes. Thanks so much for practicing with me today. Please like, subscribe, and share.